Today, we're going to talk about loading data into Snowflake. Welcome back, everybody, to our Let It Snow series. This is Greg Treziak bringing you some more Snowflake essential tips. What I provided for you down below is some failed bank data for you to utilize and follow along with our demonstration. The other thing you're going to need is a Snowflake free trial or an account. So make sure if you don't already have one, you check out this video right here to create your free trial. Once you have a free trial, go ahead and log in to Snowflake. I've already logged into Snowflake and I've moved myself over to the data tab on the left hand side menu. Here you're going to see that there is an option to first look over all of the databases that you have, any migration of the data that you might be doing, and most importantly for today's video where I'm going to show you how to load and query data in Snowflake, we're going to check out Add Data. Add Data is a great area. It kind of reminds me of Git Data in Power BI. What's nice about this Add Data area is I have the opportunity to utilize a lot of different connection types and load in the data from here using the Snow Site user interface. If I want to grab GCP or Google Cloud Storage, I could do that. Microsoft, Azure, I've got the Snowflake Marketplace, connectors, so many things here. Now, I also can get data from a URL for different sources as well. Now, if you click on more connectors here, you're going to be transferred to a different page, which will show you a lot of the other connectors. Most of these are free, but some have a paid component. So you want to look through and make sure you're getting exactly what you need, whether it's Google Sheets, Salesforce, MailChimp. There's so many here that you can look through. So depending on your specific data loading needs, some of these connectors might help you out. I'm going to go back to data and add data. And we're going to talk about the top two right here. The first is going to be load data into a table. We can take some data locally and load it right into a table from this interface right here. Then we can start querying that table and instantly getting some insights from it. The second option is to utilize a stage. And you'll see here we can load files into a stage. A stage can be kind of a temporary loading zone or area to store the data. It's also an area where if we wanted some longer term storage, we could kind of use it that way too and continually to pull from the stage as our source. Talk about those in our on-demand learning class where we dive really deep into loading and querying the data. If you haven't checked it out, check it out right here because there's a lot of great tips and tricks, including other ways to load data and how to load some less structured files. For today's demonstration, we're going to look at loading data into a table directly. I'm going to select this option right here. Now, what you'll notice is I'm going to have the option to add from a stage again. So if I want to bring from a stage into this table, I could do that too. I also can browse directly to upload my files and I have some other options down below. Let's start by selecting browse. With Browse selected, I'm going to go ahead and find my files. Go over to my documents, and I've got right here my Snowflake loading data YouTube folder, which has some failed banks data. So we're going to use failed banks data to answer a really awesome question for failed banks, which is what bank in the US has the most bank failures? So we're going to take an observation through this data right here, and we can start querying it very soon. So I'm going to select this file right here. And if you want to take a moment to open it up and take a peek at it, I'll actually show you right here. This is pretty standard. It is a very regular CSV file. Nothing crazy here. Bank name, city, state, who bought it? When did it fail? That's what we're looking at down the line. So that's a look at the raw data there. So I'm going to bring this in. And then from here, you're going to notice things are still grayed out. I am going to need to add a database. You will notice that I have some set up databases. You also have some sample databases from Snowflake to help you with your learning. 
If at this point in time you don't have a database, you can actually click plus sign database to make your own right here. I'm gonna go with failed underscore banks underscore DB. That's gonna be my failed banks database that I'm gonna create right here, right now and utilize. Let's press create and now it's gonna be an option here. You'll notice we have the database name is failed underscore banks underscore DB and we have the schema, which is already set to public. With this, we also need to create a new table. So after we've loaded in the data, we've created a database or chosen a database, we now need to create a new table. And let's go ahead and create a new one by the name of let's go with failed underscore banks underscore table. Now we are ready, ready to run and we can press next. I'll go ahead and press next here. And now you're gonna notice a green check mark and it's gonna load the data into the table. But there are occasionally some instances in which you might hit a roadblock here. The structure of the data, the naming conventions, you name it, you'll be greeted with this preview of what's gonna be brought in, the data types, and a little bit of the naming here. And you can see in this data set, bank, space name isn't going to work. That's an invalid character. This is a really common error. So I'm going to change this to bank underscore name. Good to go. Acquiring institution. Well, acquiring underscore institution. And I'll do the same for closing dates. At this point in time, it is ready to load in. Before we do that, though, check out the other area here. You can denote what is the specific file format. Keep in mind, JSON, Parquet, and more are available. More of those data types we cover in our loading and querying data class on the Pragmatic Works On Demand Learning. We also have the ability to handle some errors. So do we want to load any data if there's an error? Or do we want to try and only load the valid data? You name it. There's a lot you can do with error handling in Snowflake, so keep that in mind. But as it stands right now, we can see the name of the banks, when they failed, all this awesome information, we're ready to go ahead and load it in. Now we press load, this is gonna load it into a table and it's gonna give us the option here to immediately start querying the data. Let's choose that option so we can start to see what is going on in this data set. I'll query the data and pre-written for us is gonna be a select star statement from our database, schema, and table. You'll notice here, failed banks underscore DB is our database. The schema noted is public. This is kind of a folder where this is table is gonna be. And finally, you have the failed banks table, which is our actual table. It's also gonna limit it to 10, so we just get a kind of quick preview of the data. I'm gonna go ahead and query this data. Now, if it's your first time querying, the easiest way to go about this is to highlight the statement and then press the play button here or press run. We'll go ahead and run this, and now Snowflake is executing the query. Here we can see 10 rows of the data set. We can see Pulaski Savings Bank in Chicago, got some great deep dish pizza and thin crust, but some failed banks it looks like. And we also can notice how long this took. This query duration was 1.8 seconds to pull the 10 rows. What if I wanna see a little bit more? Let's go ahead and change the limit to a thousand. This is gonna bring in everything. Now we went from 1.8 seconds. What if we bring in all of the data here? I'll run it again. And, ah, well, it's pretty fast. <laughs> it's not too bad. That initial loading, querying it in, it took a little bit, but now it is running super, super fast. And what's cool here is I get a query detail view that's gonna let me know right here, the city with the most failed banks is a sweet home, Chicago. And the state with the most failed banks is Georgia with 93. Wow, just like that, super fast. We went from not having any data, loading it in directly to Snowflake, creating a database and a schema and organizing this and beginning to query the data right here within Snowflake. Using this as a data source, we can do a lot more, whether it's loading it into other tables, utilizing it in different ways, 
granting access to other roles in the Snowflake ecosystem, we can do that too. Another really cool thing is to visualize the data. And I'm going to show you just where you could go a little bit for that. If you go over to chart instead of results, you're going to be able to create your very own quick visualizations right here. This is a really cool area that I go over in the Pragmatic Works on-demand learning through our class loading and querying data in Snowflake. It's going to end up looking really similar to the ones here, but you have a lot of flexibility. What do you think? We loaded in that data, we're querying that data, and we got to answer our essential question really, really fast. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of fun learning and exploring Snowflake. So I hope you join me and use Greg40 to get a nice chunk of change out of your on-demand learning subscription. Remember, stay frosty and I'll see you in the next episode of our series.